Hello, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Sasha Marina. And today's segment is pretty, you know, just pretty special. It's not necessarily, um, you know, something that we've set up with much time. So um, it's a surprise guest. Her name is Shauna Carr. She is from Brooklyn, New York. And um, we're here just to kind of talk about what she has going on and, most importantly, her career and motherhood and also um, what events she has going on here in Miami and later on in the summer in NYC. So without further ado, we're going to have Shauna on the line. I want her, you know, to to feel comfortable. We're just going to have a little lady chat today. Um, Yeah. Hey, Shauna, how are you? Hi, Sasha. I'm doing wonderful. I'm in Florida and I'm really enjoying my time here. Awesome. It's nice and hot. You know, I welcome you with open arms and sun because, as you know, it's been raining here for like the past two weeks nonstop. <laughs> it's I been do. crazy down I here. Fine with me. <laughs> yes, thank the Wonderful. Lord. <laughs> so, so, Granny, let's talk about Fresh Kid Nation. That's something that you um, founded back in 2012, but that is not the beginning of your career. You actually went to a fashion high school, which is pretty interesting. Um, Let's start off with that. What is that all about? Yes. So I'll I'll explain to you and the listeners how I got started in the fashion world. Um, I knew I wanted to be a fashion designer or an artist when I was nine years old in elementary school, always sketching clothes. Um, Side note, I didn't have a style as a kid. I had different uniforms. I just loved to be creative. So my mom, I told her there's a fashion high school in New York City. It's called the High School of Fashion Industries, and it's right on Fashion Avenue at um, FIT. The college is around the corner. And I got accepted. I went from um, age 14 to about 17, and it was such an incredible experience. You know, professional classes, all our teachers were um, in the industry. So I was taking math and science and AP English and AP social studies, but I would spend two hours every day taking um, fashion draping, fashion art, sewing, so they really trained young people on how to become fashion designers. And I used that opportunity as a teenager to um, intern. So I had an internship at age 15 for um, a woman's luxury company. Um, yeah. I also um, interned at Teen People Magazine. I was a transpire. And I just made sure I surrounded myself with the right people so I was able to have some type of career in fashion design. I didn't know what it was going to be at that age, but I made sure I stayed in the loop. Like I had to be around a certain kind of people and get absorb and learn the industry for real. Um, by the time I went to college, I went to Syracuse University. Um, they had a costume design program there and a fashion design program. And I was more into for theater and television. So I did I studied costume in college. It was an amazing experience. And by the time I graduated, I was running a costume shop in Pennsylvania. I had a great opportunity to have Toys R Us Times Square as one of my clients. I had um Hasbro Toys on my client roster. I did a little backstage stuff wardrobe um, in New York. And when yeah. I became a mom, I kind of transitioned out of that field. So it's very demanding. Yeah. The pay is small. Of course. The time is a lot. So you know, I had to find alternative options um, besides being a costume designer. And I ended up designing costumes for children's theaters in New York. And it was great. My baby would be on my hip. And I would just work with children. I was very good at working with kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I kind of found my niche, right, the kids' fashion or kids' costume industry. Yeah, you you definitely, I mean, you evolved. That's what that was. You know what I mean? And, I mean, let's take it back to the whole, because I was, girl, that was a a whole lot of information. So let's take it back to the school. (laughs) I feel like that is so beautiful. That is, you know, it's always great to have supportive parents, you know. Um, Sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, kids want to do something, and let's say that, what if that school was an hour from your house, you know what I mean? Your mom would have had to sacrifice every day to take you just because you wanted to go to that school, you know? So the fact that, you know, uh, you had a supportive parent that followed you. It was an hour. I figured, because I know those technical schools are not everywhere. Yeah, they're not yeah. they're they're not everywhere. You know, it's, those are very special programs and you, you know I mm-hmm. I I wish that things like that would be brought up to the attention of kids all over our country. 
Um, that happens here in Florida as well. There's art schools, there's acting mm-hmm. schools. It's competitive because it's not for everyone. You know, I feel like everyone mm-hmm. should have the choice to go to a tech school and not have to compete. You know what I mean? To earn their spot. Because at the end of the day, you're learning something different. It's useful. You know, you still you still uh, learned your fundamentals, but instead of wasting time in art and 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 regular art class and in PE, you were doing real career, you know what I mean, classes. Exactly. That, you know, that it's it's real stuff that if if it's your passion, it's gonna carry out with you your whole life versus you're not necessarily exactly. a social studies enthusiast, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so you know, that's that's. I mean, that's wonderful. And then you went into costume designing. That that is a job. Wow. And yes. and now you are, you know, just you you've created this fashion collective. You know, you do. I call it a collective because you do so much with your brand. It's not just promoting exactly. um, designers, but you actually, you know, help child future child models you know, that like, that like to do their thing and, and pose with clothes and, you know, walk on the runway. Yes. It's very constructive because it takes kids yes. away. I feel like a lot of kids nowadays are, are too shy or they just don't have people skills. And, exactly. um, you know, that, that breaks that barrier from the child being shy, from being more open in front of a camera, from being more likely to speak to, you know, to people that they don't necessarily know because they're doing something yes. constructive. So I applaud exactly. you for that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, and talk to me about your son. They, yes, so my son, MJ, he's 10 now. Um, yeah. And the, the reason why I started blogging, and blogging was big like back in the 2000s. I mean, my first yep. blog gig was for MTV University. I was still in yeah. college, and I think I had a MySpace page. I remember. <laughs> they I have one of those. I'm coming to Florida. And blogging for MTV, and I was like, hey, maybe I can do this for kids. And I kind of forgot about it. Once I had my son MJ, um, I was unemployed. I walked out of my job. I was a bridal seamstress, which was very yeah. stressful. And I was six months pregnant. And I just you know, walked out. I was like, I can't do this. And I need to find something to do to keep myself positive and, you know, from not being depressed and be happy and healthy. So I said, you know, when we get back into blogging on my own this time, and I came up with the name First Connection. And during that time, I was pregnant. I was also um, acting, doing some background work for pregnant moms. I was trying to model to be a pregnant mom. And I was like, hey, there's a real industry here for expectant mothers and for babies. So once I had MJ, of course, he really told me. He dropped a gorgeous little baby. Um, I started taking him to open calls in New York, and I was always finding calls on Craigslist. But there was no fresh connection that existed. There was no website or a social media page where you could find casting calls for babies. You had to go through Craigslist or word of mouth. And he did a yeah. couple of things as an infant. Um, and I thought to myself, I said, why is there no blogs that tell parents where to go, what to do? Also, there was, you know, MJ's African American, and he had yeah. to look a certain way. Back in that day, um, the agencies or casting, they mostly wanted um, babies with light skin and light eyes and curly hair. And then when he looked like that, he looked like himself, you <laughs> know, darker skin, big, kinky hair. It's, and I was I wondering, so why that. the African-American babies have to look a certain way? Um, do all the babies look like MJ? I mean, MJ looks like himself. Yep. Why is there more kids who can model and look like have, themselves? So that's where the blog kind of came from. Definitely. Have you noticed that when they depict Latinos out there, how do Latinos look? They look Mexican. We, I went yes. through the same exact thing my brother you know Mm -hmm. we we started in the entertainment industry I started at 14 my siblings kind of followed my footsteps you know and at the time my brother Mm -hmm. was 10 years old like the age your son is now you know boys at 10 years old they start going through a little phase they don't know if they want to grow out their hair they start gaining a little (laughs) weight you know what I mean so my brother started growing out his hair we're Cuban we're Afro-Cuban so he had that nice Uh curl but he was light-skinned but we have we have kind of like this Arab look because my mom's dad, we mm-hmm. have, you know, we have family from Morocco, or whatever. So we have a different look that doesn't necessarily look like your typical Latino. And although my exactly. brother was a gorgeous boy in our eyes, he didn't fit the typical Latino boy yeah, with straight like black Latino. hair. Yes, yes. The, the, the typical Latino, mm-hmm. straight hair, proper Spanish. So we miss, we didn't fit into that demographic, even though we're Cuban. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't fit into the Latino Especially demographic in, in the commercial days. world. 
Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's now, my son now is Cuban as well. My son is Cuban and Haitian. <laughs> well, look at that. You see what I'm saying? So it's like yes, he don't fit the demographic <laughs> either. He's not Latino yes. in their eyes, and it's crazy. Like nope. he's not even Caribbean. Nope. They look at him and he's like, yeah, he, he's African American. You know, but it's crazy yeah. how you know Hollywood wants to like just shape images to society yes. when it's not it's not Pre- realistic. Um, put them in boxes, and it's not. I'm like everyone doesn't look the same way. There are kids who are um, chubby, chubby kids. There are kids yep. with little lago. There are kids who wear glasses. Um, there are yep. kids and short kids, and it just wasn't enough diversity, especially on the internet. And that's kind of yep. where the idea came from. And I was looking at Fashion Bomb Daily, and they started their blog. Um, Claire is my inspiration. And I was like, hey, she has this fashion bomb daily and she features um, people of color. And I was like, nobody does this for kids. How yep. about I come up with my own like baby fashion bomb daily? Now they have fashion bomb kids. They just, they just started a couple years ago. But I, I first creation was truly one of these very first blogs that showcased children from all backgrounds, all disabilities, all sizes and shapes. I, mean, I would say that. I'm like, nope, my blog was the first. I need to listen to somebody else. <laughs> Um, Definitely. Day, which is wonderful. And how did you um go about just like gaining these connections, you know, like finding your 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 little um niche of writers to contribute for you and you know, just kind of being right. loyal to the brand? Well, it's very interesting. I'm a people person, so you know, yeah. my husband always says, Babe, when you walk in the room, like the whole room lights up. And I've been that way since I was a kid, always just hey, I'm here, how are you? Yeah. Are comfortable. I'm a cancer as well, so they're very maternal and you know, warm people. So um, when I started blogging, it was just myself, and I have a sister who's a graphic artist. She developed the logo. Um, she was like, she was in my head, and she knew exactly what I wanted and what it should look like. And she did that yeah. with no charge. I mean, my sister's an amazing artist. She did work on the film Aladdin. I mean, she's like big time. Her husband has an Oscar. Wow. Oscar. Oh, wow. so like, this time, Congratulations. Let me help you out. Thank you. I helped <laughs> you out with the logo website, and I came up with this image and this brand early on. Um, and um, with my background in fashion and the people and the connections that I knew, I said, hey, let me just reach out to the designers. Let I talk the same language they talk. I know how to sew. I know what a tech pack is. I know what fabrics to use. So designers enjoy talking to me because I was a former designer. And then moms like talking to me because I'm a mom, and they say stage mom. But I've been in the industry. I've worked backstage with kids. I've been on camera. I've done some acting. So I kind of have all the connections. And I think like, this is one place. First Nation is a one-stop shop. Um, and then I think last year, maybe 2017, I started getting really serious with First Kid Nation. I'm going to go into the things. Um, and I was like, you know, let me just ask, can I go to the Petite Parade in New York? And they were always a fan. So, yes, you can come to our show. And I always ask, hey, how about I do um, Global Kids Fashion Week in London with Alice and Alexa? Sure, you can send Sammy Wilson and uh, feature on your website. So I would just reach out to people that I knew in London. Do you want to go to a fashion yeah. show? Can you take some pictures with, with your cell phone? <laughs> and then, you know, I'll wow. send a photographer. Hey, I'm a blogger. Can I feature your um, photo on the website? Every photographer always says yes. They go, yes, sure yeah. you can. Um, yeah. And it was just me really asking, you know, always ask because people rarely say no, especially when it's about children. Um, you know, be very nice and kind because you never know if it's a in the future. And then last year, I really started exploring um, Fresh Generation and Our Roots. I started um, reaching out to Instagram, hey, I'm looking for bloggers in Los Angeles. I need a blogger in Atlanta. I can't pay you because we don't monetize our blog, but I can get you VIP access. And I can get you book bags. A couple of years reached back. Um, our parent and our kid blogger in Atlanta, Shonda, no mention, her name is Shonda, not Shonda, <laughs> and her daughter, Anaya, they was actually going to the Atlanta Women's Expo. And they met um, Tiny Harris, <laughs> which was amazing. And Tiny kind of a shout wow. out on our Instagram page. It was nice meeting you guys in Athens. And they also met Chloe Spelling, who took pictures with them. And I thought that was incredible. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So, you know, if you ask and say this is a certain way, people are more trusting. And then the first kid nation, the website looks extremely professional. And people yeah. are more willing to work with my brand. They're like, hey, I've met so many designers. And it's like, I love your website. I love your logo. I want to connect with you guys because we're out yeah. in the street. You know, we're not Target. We don't feature Target on the website, but we'll feature Desert Empire, a smaller brand, you know. 
And what a yeah. t-shirt uh, looks for is a small hip hop brand uh, basement model. So we're kind of out in the streets. I would say, I said a certain way. We're a blend. I would say we're a blend of high and low. We're a blend of corporate and street. And we're just right there on the cusp of anything that's cool and tribulated. Wow, girl. And it's all about how you present yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's beyond how you brand yourself online. It's how you present yourself in person. You know what I mean? It's when you exactly. show people that you're serious. Like, yeah, I'm not just a person with hopes and dreams. I have this established. You know what I mean? I meet so many yep. people. And, and as you see, I'm pretty sure you checked me out. You went through my stuff. Well, You've probably it. seen how long I've been doing this. You know what I mean? I do this more for the passion than to be known worldwide. I was actually talking to my husband about that yesterday. I'm like, babe, you know what I mean? I'm in this media stuff. I've been doing this since I'm 15 years old, literally, Mm -hmm. you know, and like, I do it because I love it. And nowadays it's about like, oh, how many followers you got? And it's like, all right. You know what I mean? You're right. I might have to. I have to work on my following on on social media. You know, I don't got a million yet. I gotta work on that. <laughs> but um, but I do it for the passion more than anything. And and when people see me and and you know what I mean, I look, you know, I look young to them. And they're like, wait a minute, but wow, yeah. you you've done this. You you've done all of this already. You know, and I, I give the opportunity to a lot of people to to come and talk about themselves. You know, just like we're doing right now, because people do so much. And just because you don't have a million followers on social media nowadays, nobody knows. Nobody knows what you're doing for these kids in fashion. You know what I mean? I mean, you do. People know you and people, you have your following. But I'm talking about, you know, more spread out, worldwide. Like, there's people out there that just because you're not necessarily with the right person at the right time, like, I feel that they, they just have to be brought up brought up and just giving a little bit more of attention and 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 just pro, promote your your seriousness and your passion. So we're going to transition a little more to, to you know, you're welcome. We're going to transition into this passion of 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 fashion and this collective that you've created, you know, it, it's gone way beyond the blog and and all of that. Now you actually yes. have events and it's called Behind the Seams, which I love the name. It's so creative. You know, um, uh, let's let's talk about that event that you have this Saturday, and what is the pal the panel all about, and you know who your guests are and and whatnot. Oh my God, I'm so excited! First of all, this is um, the third event that I'm hosting ever, and it's the very first event that's not in New York City. Um, wow. My best friend lives in Florida, and I was like, "Hey, I'm visiting Florida. How about we do something in Miami because we have some um, followers there." And I also yeah. have a few designers in the area. So behind the scenes, Kids Fashion Meetup Miami will be on Saturday, June 22nd at CIC Miami. Um, we do some giveaways to invite some cool kids from the area. And basically, it's a networking event, and it's a panel discussion. And the purpose of behind the scenes is to give kids and their families some insight and guidance on how to navigate the kids' fashion industry. So your kid doesn't have to be a model. Your kid could be a designer. Your kid could be a photographer. Your kid could also own um, their own accessory store. And there's a lot of things that the kids can do in this niche market. The kids' fashion yeah. industry um, generates about $250 million a year in America. Not as yeah. large as the women's market, of course, but, you know, kids need clothes and kids will look cool. So, you yeah. know, what are some ways you can start? And the whole idea of it came from my followers. People would email me um, from all around the world, hey, I want to get my kid into fashion. How do I do that? And I would literally take time and respond. Um, I even get Skype sessions with some family. I'm like, hey, why don't you Skype me and we'll chat about how you can get started. So I thought, you know, let me bring together the photographers, the bloggers, the influencers, the actors, the designers, the agents in one spot, keep it intimate and small, and then we just have this powerful day of networking. We have it for adults. Why is it there one for kids? You know, people get yeah. married for little kids. Like, oh, my God, they don't sit still. I'm like, of course they don't. So make it fun. Have something for them to do. Have snacks for them to eat. <laughs> Every yeah. that I have, I always make sure I have a color and stuff in it. It's very popular. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think that more than anything. Listen to the panelists. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are scared about when they do kids events like that because they're just scared of the liability. But it's just very important for mothers. This is is as important for the kids as it is for the parents because now you're able to network with parents that are in your same industry. You're not alone. 
you know what exactly. I mean? So yeah, it's 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 a great idea. It's it's you know it's it's a genius event, and uh, you know I wish you all the su- continued success with this. You have one coming up as well in uh, New York City, correct? At the end of the summer. Yes, so I'm so excited um, that I'm having the kids fashion play date. It's our first outdoor event. It took six months to get a New York City park permit, by the way. So just so like wow. in New York City, you got to get the permit and you got to apply six months in advance. But I just got approved. Two days ago, the permit went through. The park, um, we paid a do- we did a donation to the park. So it's happening on Sunday, August fourth, and that event is free. Um, and we invite people to donate. It's a fundraiser to help um, raise funds for our website. And then in September, I'll be in London for Fashion Week. So I'm also having a kids fashion meetup in London. I'm waiting to pay the deposit on the venue, so that's happening. <laughs> Literally, I can wow. pay for that venue. But I'm so excited about going to London because I have so many friends, like really good friends that I met through social media um, who live in London, and they've been dying for me to come to Europe. It's my first trip to Europe ever, and I'm very yeah. excited to go during Fashion Week. I want to get invites. Hey, Sean, I always come to Fashion Week, London. Um, I've been a media sponsor for many more Fashion Weeks for the past two years, but I've never had an opportunity to actually go and enjoy the show myself. So this year will be the first time I'm there. I'm hoping to go to London um, at least twice a year from now on to enjoy Fashion Week and to meet the families there and uh, see my friends that I know. So we're having Miami first to kick off the year, New York, and then London. You are doing the fashion dream, girl. You know when you go to, yes. to, to designers' companies and they say Miami, New York, London? <laughs> yes. That is the yep. fashion dream. That is That's beautiful. It. I really applaud you for that. You know, and and it Thank just you. shows what it dedication to takes you to. Yeah. Oh yeah, LA is yeah. next. LA is right. LA is right there, girl. You keep asking. Right I'm getting there. <laughs> next year, I'm getting, getting there. Detroit, LA, Atlanta next year. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But you, but you know what I'm saying? Like, but you got New York City though. New York beats anybody. I mean, New York, like exactly. that is Fashion that is the kingdom. So you know what I mean. That so I mean, as regards yes. to fashion, you got you know Miami's different. You know Miami has its own swag. You know it's it's a cultural yes, melting it pot. <laughs> it's very it's very different in, in in fashion. You know, and and as well as New York, New York just has. I, I went through all the pictures of the kids, and I'm just like, I love the way kids dress up there. Kids have some more creativity than yes. they have down there. It's so interesting. I'm like, they got so much swag. I just so much creativity. Have I seen the scarves, and I was like, I want one of those furry scarves too. <laughs> yes, that's, that's awesome. and they dress themselves. The parents yeah. have an idea of what the kids should look like. But mm-hmm. you know, when I get my camera out, I take all the photos myself. And um, when I get my camera out, and I'm looking at the kids, I go, Do you want to change anything? And they go, Yep. Yeah. I think their parent looks for me. They go, Yes, I have a tie bag and sunglasses, and so I, you know, I have them on stuff. And I, I help them style, and the parents help them style. But at the end of the day, the kids yeah. put together their own look, and that's like so important. Yeah. And it gives them an opportunity to have professional model experience. You know, they say, "Hey, I did a shoot with Fresh Kid Nation, um, and the photos they keep forever. I take a lot of photos of my shoots. Um, it's content for me. It's content for them, and it gives them opportunity. I would say 80% of the kids who are Fresh Kid Nation models." have never modeled before. And I purposely look for kids who never model. And they're always the best ones. They come on time. They serve the with the camera. I mean, they're always the best ones. That's funny that you pointed that out. They come on time. You know, because once you got a yes, little experience do. in the industry, you think you could be there whenever you want. <laughs> you got the diva <laughs> attitude. I've done 10 photo shoots before. I can get there 15 minutes late. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, I that's, that's, I'm usually, like, running. Yes, it seems like the the newbies are always on time, um, and they get nervous. By the the time the shoot's over, the kids are, like, happy. They're playing. I always bring a football with me or some kind of toy. And the parents always connect to my photo shoots. You'll see the parents in the corner sitting and chatting, and the kids are, like, taking photos. And I turn around. It always starts with the parent is on top of the kids. Do this. Put your foot out. Do this. 15 Uh, minutes later, the parents are, like, on the side having long conversation and I thought like, we need to do something about this we need to let the kids play and let the parents network. no 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 that is the truth Mira my sister used to do kid acting classes 
And, you know, you have the, the mothers that are very dedicated. They take it up upon themselves for it to be their personal passion as well. And um, yeah. they will sit through the whole acting class and tell the kid how to do the act class when they have a, an acting teacher right next to them. It's like, listen, yeah. <laughs> listen, you yeah. need to leave your, you know what it is? Because the, the child needs to be guided by other people. You're never going to be with them there all the time. They need to learn how to listen exactly. to, to instructions and how to, to, how to just, yes, and just how to have people skills. You know what I mean? Like if they have a, a, a coworker yeah. next to them, you know, in, in this case, another child actor, they need to know how to communicate and how to just conduct themselves with that person and not have their yes. parent over them telling them how to, oh how to you know, so I my I'm my advice to you <laughs> is that next time no of course it's an instinct yeah, my mom my mom it. would do it to me all the time. time. Mm-hmm. Yes, I thought the thing with MJ, I learned my lesson. He did it. MJ was just yeah. for BET last summer, and I was so excited. He asked to share at five home. You want to come in the room? I was like, yes. Yeah. I had for you so when you do these photo shoots um I read on your website that sometimes you know designers give you free clothing in order for you to you know use children to take photos so how does that work like a child model wants to reach out to you um let's say you have those Mm -hmm. scarves to model and you know you have a child actor that's willing I mean model that's willing to do it you kind of just you know give them credit for the shoot they get their free photos and at the same time you know what I mean you're working with a designer to publish uh, their photos of their, their merchandise as well? Yes. So what I'll do is um, all the photo shoots are done on my schedule. So yeah. I make sure I, just, I feel like I need new content. I go, okay, let me find out who I can reach out to. So they'll That's be, okay. you know, I look to social media. I try to find yeah. um, a brand that I like or I reach out to And well, I go, hey, I like this stuff. You want to do a shoot with me and some kids? And I explain to them, hey, if you're going to collaborate with Fresh Kid Nation, um, we don't charge for shoots, and you don't charge for shoots. It's all about collaborating. Just make sure yeah. that you have some items for the kids, right? You got to give them some yeah. for their time. Um, and it's only a brand that I want to work with. Sometimes I find it's not right. I go, you know, the quality of your work. Or your brand, I'm not going to associate with. I will answer, it. and we'll put it together. I'll send. I tell the designer, look at my page, look the style of photos that I shoot. It's street style. Yeah. If it's cool for you, I'll do a casting call, and our casting calls are very popular. We get so much engagement from casting calls. And I, yeah. I used to cast like by looking through social media. I would pick kids randomly, or ask kids that I know, like friends of my friends or friends of my sons that we met on auditions. Yeah. Instagram cast and call contest. And that became yeah. very popular. So we need to get so many more kids who never modeled before. And then once I cast the kids, I'll cast my favorites. The designers will pick. Sometimes it's just random. I go, hey, you need any money? No. Boom. Got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever's available. Work out the schedule. And we got it. Like, hey, let's go. Let's go to a park. Everything is outdoors and warm weather. So the shirts can style yourself. You have to style yourself the Fresh Kid Nation way, right? Yeah. And we take photos, and it's always amazing. Um, sometimes brands will reach out to me, and I've noticed that starting recently, brands will reach out to me, like, hey, can we do a shoot? Um, and that's very flattering, right? To me, that's flattering because I'm excited that I don't have to reach out to them anymore. Oh, yeah. Um, so the photo shoots are awesome. Actually, Side note for all your listeners, um, I'm going to be casting an independent film. It's the first time I've ever casted for a feature, an um, independent film, my feature. And I'm very excited about it. I'm like, hey, how should we do this? It's acting. It's not modeling. The kids got to do videos instead. But it's my first time casting for um, a feature, uh, independent film. I'm excited about it. That casting should be up tomorrow, like as soon as possible, where kids have to submit a video. And then we're going to the principal roles are going to do a live audition in person. And it's exciting for me because I have that background in theater and acting. So I'm like, oh, it's 
the first time I get to meet my theater skills. Um, that, that's amazing. In other avenues. Yeah. Definitely. You continue to evolve, you know, and yes. um, the, the fact that you're open to, to that change, you know, it's good because you, you continue to just open doors for yourself, for your brand, for those friends around you, because like you said, you know, your son's in, in an industry where, you know, he has his own friends that he can collaborate with and things like that. So mm-hmm. what is this, is this film going to be uh, geared towards, like, is it like a family movie? Is it a kid movie? How do you, what, what is the synopsis on that? Yes, well, the screenwriter actually wrote the movie with her son um, when he was five years old. It's kind of centered around the name, but it's called The Adventures of Wolf Boy. And the movie, um, in the film The Legal, he transforms into um, a special kind of hero. So the movie's going to feature kids ages 7 to 12, and we're looking for some principal roles and a lot of extra roles. And it's going to be filming in New York in July. The um, director and cinematographer is actually a friend of mine. His name is Taekwon Bates. He was asking me about helping with the casting. And I met Taekwon about two years ago through social media. You know, he's an up and coming photographer. He goes, Hey, I'm a photographer. I like your work. How can we collaborate? So, two years ago, I started styling with him. You know, he would do kid photo shoots and collaborate with Fresh Kid Nation. I would style, I would help style, I would pull clothes, um, with, with the team, or whatever it was. They became like a real friendship. <laughs> with I'm like, we're friends now. This is amazing. So he has grown over the years. You know, he quit his full time job and he's um doing cinematography and camera work and photography full time. And he's evolving and I'm evolving. And since we are friends, it's an opportunity for me to reach out to me and vice versa. You know. So it's been like a very wonderful, like a genuine friendship that was started over social media. So that's how I became involved with um getting into what like the film castle. You know, that's awesome. And, and and I'm pointing something out here to our listeners. You know, you just said that he he, he left his full-time job. No, he left yeah. what wasn't making him happy. You know what I mean? Exactly. People, because what we do is full-time. You know what I mean? What you do is full-time. We're, 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 mm-hmm. we're doing, you know, your full-time passion. You know, we ain't putting money in someone else's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. you, you, you know what I mean? That that that's a difference because I come across that all the time. Um, I mean, like I said, I've been in this industry since I'm 15, so my idea of the mm-hmm. workforce is completely different than the average person. You know what I mean? Exactly. I've never worked corporate. Never worked corporate. Uh, you know, I'm still an independent contractor. I worked. <laughs> yeah, I've worked. I worked for so many brands. You know, I've done so much, but I've, it's always been on my time. So the yeah. fact that, you know, I'm 27 now and it, I, I still don't know what the corporate world is because I've never, you know, wow. I mean, and I've tried, don't get me wrong. I've tried, I've tried as low as applying to McDonald's when I was eight, 19 years old, but I guess, mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't know. I guess, you know, that my college degrees were too much. I, I don't understand. I've never like, I feel like my, my job in this world isn't to work for anybody. Like I continue mm-hmm. to succeed on my own and it's crazy. You know, um, and like I said, mm-hmm. I've tried, I've tried, and it just it hasn't it hasn't been given to me yet. So that's what I do. What I do, you yeah. know, I'm, I, I do my freelance stuff. I do my media, which is my passion, and just like mm-hmm. yourself, I mean, you you found that niche that fits you, and and it obviously fits and, you because yes, now I'm stuck with it. exactly because now people are reaching out to you. People reaching out to you means yes. that you're doing something right. <laughs> Exactly. You know, and I was so, you know, this started as a hobby. It was this started as a hobby when I was yeah. freelancing. Um, this was a clothing line. You know, I was fired from a job. I went to business um, courses in New York City at SUNY Eleven Camp College campus, and this was a clothing line. And I had opportunities to earn a master's degree and teach full time. And I, I was teaching for two years full time kindergarten. Woo, the struggle. Um, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, let Forget about first kid nation. I let the blog domain name expire. Somebody bought it out for me. Then they tried to charge me a thousand dollars to buy it back. It was like a whole crazy thing. And then um one night You know I experienced that? Yeah, really people 
No, I'm, well, finish, finish yes. your thought because I'm going to go back to that. That's something very important, and it yes. happened to me as well. I think people out yes. there will finish, finish what you were telling me, and then we're going to talk about this because this is a serious yes. topic. People out there taking over it's your domain. Serious. Yeah. So when I was teaching full time, I was teaching kindergarten and going to grad school. I didn't have a three year old kid. Um, you forget things, and I let the blog lapse. I didn't blog. I didn't do Instagram. I just forgot about it. Legit, like once a month. The domain name expired. Um, I tried to get back into it, like, the next school year. I ended up teaching dance. Uh, so I'm a dance teacher. And it's amazing. It was, like, night and day. I'm like, oh, I get to teach, teach kids dance. And on my own time. And it's fun. And I like it. It's not stressful. I started getting back into blogging. I have receipts. I think I have receipts. I have screenshots of the email the person sent me. Um, I ignored it. They reached out to me again. And I ignored it for, like, a full year and a half. Lo and behold, I kept checking, domain name dot com. Is it available? It was available. The person just let it go, let it go, let it go. <laughs> and I grabbed it, and I ended up getting it back for like eight bucks. And I would never let it expire again. But that shows you, you know, you're not putting your time and energy into something that you're passionate about. There are people out there ready to swoop in and take credit for your hard work and what you've done. Um, so, yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. That, you know, and now going back to, you know, you losing your, your domain and stuff, that happened to me, I'd say, about three, four years ago. You know, I went through the same thing. I was too focused in, in you know, in, in, in my other line of work, and I just wasn't paying so much mm-hmm. attention to my own brand. And I got carried away maybe for a year or so until by the mm-hmm. time that I found out, you know, that my domain had expired, I tried going back, and I'm like, you know what I mean? It's just the Sasha Marina show. You know, ain't nobody, mm-hmm. ain't nobody know me. Ain't no other Sasha Marina oh. out there. Trust me, I look on Google. I look for Sasha Marina on Google. I'm the only one that pops out. Let me tell you. Really? I go back to my domain, and I call them, and I'm like, listen, you know, I want to I want to renew my .com. Um, yeah, your .com has been bought out by someone else. It's, it's currently Ooh. registered. I'm like, the what same. do you mean it's currently registered? You know what I mean? Like, this is my domain. I have proof yes. that I have my company registered since 2012. I'm the only one in the Internet with this name. Like, who would do such thing? Come to find out, Man. it's a Japanese company. It's a Japanese wow. company that has my domain, you know, because I <gasps> went to Domain Searcher maybe about two months ago, and it's still registered mm-hmm. under them. And there's no way of communicating oh, wow. with them because they're in Japan. Yeah. So it's like I still can't wow. do my dot com. Like I lost my dot com forever. Oh, no. Like unless I get like someone in between that can like help me out with that. Like that's why I have this weird, you know, website with dot info because I thought like okay, dot info is better than than everything else than dot yeah. net. I don't really the like dot net. net. I don't yeah, like I don't like dot net. It sounds like yeah. a school website. You know what I mean? <laughs> like so. Yeah. I did dot info. I stuck with that, and it's been like that for two years now because someone took my dot com, girl. That's so yep. crazy. You have to wait till so it goes back on the Yeah. Very similar. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. That's interesting, bro. So um, I think that this has been a great interview. I completely, like, appreciate your time jumping in on the on our station today. I know this was complete last minute, but I really wanted to help out and promote that uh, fashion event you have this weekend. You know, I, I oh wish you goodness. the best of luck Thank with that. Thank you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and well, Shauna, I, I I hope to keep you know interacting with you. You know, keep a connection with everything that you have going on. I have a a, a one year old myself. I know that he's a little out Aww. of your your age range. I know you only work with kids that were like five, six. But oh, um, babies oh, are difficult. I love babies though. <laughs> I love yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, they're, they're, they're different. They're different. <laughs> but I'll yeah. tell you what, he's, so he's, he's a really funny kid. He actually loves the camera. Like, he'll pose for you. So if you, if you want to try no. him out, yeah, yeah, if you ever want to try him out, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> yes, yes. You never know. <laughs> All right, girl. Well, thank you. Thank you so much again for taking your time. You know, shout out to your family, your son. And uh, thank best you. of luck. Thank week. you, Sasha. You're welcome. You Thank you care. so much. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Alrighty, so that's Shauna Carr, all the way from Brooklyn. She's actually currently in Miami though. Uh, but uh she's here to uh you know, to present her 
her panel discussion on behind the scenes here in Miami. The location is called CIC Miami. The date is Saturday, June 22nd. The time is 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you go onto our website, the Sasha Marina Show dot info guys you go into our tsms radio page you'll see the blog post there um go into the event bright link and uh reserve your tickets thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend bye-bye